you paid. Thank you. Amen. Because this is, I'm telling you, there ain't nothing in this world worth living for. Look at neighbors say nothing. Yeah. Now you may think it is, but it's the point of the man wants to die and after that at the judgment. Is it worth you going in the judgment unprepared? Not me. I want Jesus to stand up for me. If I have to go there by myself. I know it's a wrap. <laughs> you know, anybody that I didn't see that thing in the, in the courtroom, so a man that has his own self for a lawyer is a fool. I'm, I'm not going before the great white throne judgment of God by myself. Jesus. Oh, no. Mm -mm. I want the Lord to go before me and say, He's mine. Amen. 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 So the father looked and said, Okay, go ahead. There was a guy that had a vision. He went to heaven. He stood before the gate. And the angel said, why should I allow you to come in? And the, and the, and the, and the guy said to the angel, not because of any righteousness which I've done. Amen. Hello? Amen. But because of Jesus Amen. and his shed blood. Amen. And the angel said, enter in. A lot of people don't understand. That's the only way. I don't care how good you live. He said all our righteousness is what? As 50 rags. None of us going to get in there because of living right. We get in because of our faith in Christ. He is the heaven of salvation. He is our hope of salvation. Apart from him, there is none. Amen. That's why every knee got to bow. Every tongue must confess to the glory of the Father that Jesus of Nazareth is Lord. Apart from his shed blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. Only his blood could wash away the sin nature. Only the sprinkling of that blood can cleanse our country from dead work to serve the true and living God. Amen. So anything you think you're doing that's making you right with God, you better repent. There ain't but one way. Jesus. His name is? Jesus. His name is? Jesus. His name is? Jesus. And, and I don't want to belittle prosperity, what I'm about to say. I don't want to belittle prosperity. Don't misunderstand me. Prosperity is everything, but people think prosperity is just material. No, it's spiritually, mostly mentally, physically, materially, financially, and socially. That's prosperity. Amen. But a lot of people don't understand that the scripture says he wishes above all that you're prosper and be in hell, yeah. even as your soul, soul prosper. So James said, receive that engrafted word with meekness that is able to. Save. Paul said, work out your soul, your salvation with fear and trembling. But most people don't get that, so they end up coming up short all the time. So they think it's a one-time thing. I gave my life to the Lord, and I'm guaranteed to go to heaven. That's no, that's that, that's that uh, eternal security doctrine. Yeah, that, no, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna say this though: in Christ, you are secure. But you can walk out anytime you want to. Y'all follow what I'm saying? You can walk away anytime you want to. That's why, that's why Jude talks about being twice dead. If it's not possible, it wouldn't put it in the book. Amen. Amen. That's, why, that's, why, that's why the Apostle Paul and, and, and Peter too was telling us about this iniquitous and vile generation and warning us to flee it. Because this thing is corrupted. It's corruptible, man. It's Jesus keeping another the cross. There's so much stuff going on around. I was sitting there the other day and I, I said, this is overwhelming for people that are not strong in the Lord. I mean, this spirit of, you want me to tell you? This spirit of seduction, deception is strong. There are three words I share with, my, with Janae, and I told her I got to look it up. And it's the thesaurus. Say that word for me. Thesaurus, how do you say that word? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Indifferent, complacent, and apathetic. Because I'm looking for another word to sum it all up. Because people in the church are, are, are insensitive to what's really going on around them. They are. It is almost like there's an element in the atmosphere just, just lulling people to sleep when it comes down to holiness and righteousness. Mm. I'm for real. You don't understand how bad it is out there. It's so bad out there now, people are lying. I mean, talking about church folks too, lying. And think nothing about it. Yeah. I mean, they do, and, and uh, the kids, the kids always saying, "How, how y'all say that by talking just to be talking?" That's what I say. But how y'all say that? Chatting, chatting. just chatting. Yeah, they're out there just chatting, 
chatting away, saying stuff that they don't even mean. That's lying. Then they said, that's lying. Yeah. And if you don't realize that this is not, this ain't just in one spot. This thing is worldwide. Years ago, I was sitting in my office at 112 South Court Street, and uh, uh, D.P. Thompson came in with my landlord at the time, but he died. We, he didn't die. He went on. He ascended. He transcended. Went on to be with the Lord. But uh, we were sitting there talking, and he came in one day, and I was down. He said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm tired of people lying. They just lie just to be lying. He said, me too. <laughs> I said, they don't have no reason to be lying. They just be lying just to be lying. What is wrong with the people? It's Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm ready to go. That's why I say, bring it on. I say, everybody ain't ready, but I'm telling you, you got to understand. He said, those not, days not short, no flesh going to be saved. Bring it on. Let's get us up out of here because people don't realize this, this complacency, this indifference, this apathy is causing a lot of people to backslide and they shout and speaking in tongues yeah. and don't even realize it. Say it. Compromising. Going along to get along and selling their soul down the toilet because they don't realize what they're doing. And I'm sitting there looking at them and then you call people on a the lie. They look at you talking about, I, I, I didn't mean that. If I hadn't been here, you would have been. It's, it's, you follow what I'm saying? That's why I'm glad I repent every night. He said, you don't have to repent no more once you keep saying that. Okay. Keep saying that. I'm going to see you on the, on the left-hand side. I'm going to be on the right and you're going to be on the left. Keep on saying that. Oh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's a way of life for a saint. Amen. We keep short accounts with the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You're running around talking about they ain't got a humble they said you better get delivered. I don't know where you are. <laughs> Everything we got is in Christ. Glory we ain't nothing outside of Christ. Yeah. They ain't but one body of Christ. Yeah. And we all baptized in that body by one spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it's his righteousness that saves us, not ours. Yeah. Well, I thank God for Jesus. Yeah. He's my hero. Yeah. 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 Amen. The word said God loves who? What kind of giver? Yeah. What kind of giver? Yeah. What does it mean to be a cheerful giver? You get that's right. How many people really are happy about their giving? You know why people struggle with giving? Because they be money's the answer. And there is a verse, one verse in the Bible, one, just one, just one, just one. But they don't understand. You got to take the whole thing in context. What was going on? Solomon was searching out everything. Amen. And he made a statement. He said, money answers all things. Money may answer all things, but it's not the answer for all things. Y'all got what I'm saying? And what people don't understand is, yeah, money will give you an answer. But it can't resolve everything. Amen. I tell you one thing you can't resolve, and that's a jealous husband. Amen. <laughs> no matter how many gifts you give him, it's not gonna quell that jealousy. So don't think but and Solomon himself said that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we got we got a lot of a lot of things that uh, money will resolve and money will solve. Amen. But most people think holding on to the money is gonna resolve their problem. And I often say this all the time. If God can't trust you in the little, why would he commit you that which is great? People are talking about, they can't pay their tithes on a dollar, but they believe in God for a million dollars. That would make him dead and brain dead. Why would he bless you apart from the natural order of things to receive a million dollars so you can go exploit it on yourself and not use it for him? But well, what about all them people out there getting all that, winning all that money and all that kind of I said, God is not go overrule, circumvent, go around the natural order of things to bless you with a million dollars so you can go spend it on yourself. So who letting them get it? See, 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 the blessing of the Lord make rich you have what? Are those people having sorrow following? So how is that a blessing from God 
and a lot of them killing themselves behind. One lady won the lottery recently, I think a year ago. She won the lottery a little ago, and she regrets it to this day that she ever won the lottery. I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. That's why I said all that, because I want to get to this point of what God want me to say so I can get to this point to help y'all understand. You cannot beat God given. What you mean by that? There is a blessing that comes from just giving that you can't get from anything else. There was a man named the old grandfather Rockefeller. He had got real sick, couldn't eat nothing but jello and baby food. Could barely keep that down. Somebody came to him and told him, if you get involved in charitable giving, you'll recover your health. He started building wings on hospitals, funding college funds for people. Y'all follow what I'm saying? All of a sudden, his stomach started to repair itself. He was healed. He ended up being able to eat just like everybody else again. What you think happened to him? Because there's a law by giving. Hallelujah. Amen. And it shall be given. <laughs> Y'all got it? While there's may remain of seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest. Y'all got it? No, I'm talking about the cycle. Seed time and harvest. So it ain't just seed time. Seed time produces something. Paul said, give and it well, Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Right? So in other words, you're setting something in motion when you're a giver. Whatever you're giving out will come back to you. So you treat right. people right, care for people, be genuinely concerned about other folk, then people be concerned about you. That well, that well, what's the word for it? It's a word for that. That 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 good feeling you have that wealth for others' welfare will come back to you. And it'll bring help. Amen. It'll bring joy. It'll bring peace. People are trying to figure me out all the time. I wonder why I be so happy, why I be so joyful all the time. I was in the car the other day. We just come back meeting me and Apostle Wilson and his wife. And we was coming back and I started talking about the goodness of God and praising God and glorifying God. He said, that sugar must have got it. Well, I, it, it must have had me every day then. Well, people, people call me that too blessed to be stressed, man. I got folk all the time. They call me up on the phone and they'll say, how you do? I say, oh, I already know. They say, they, they say that. I don't say that. They say, I already know. You, you blessed and highly favored of the Lord. It's only the beginning. I, so I got a lot of folks saying that now. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Pastor, how come you like that? Because I am. That's it. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Too important to be disappointed. I love a good fight. <laughs> too equipped to be well. You can't lose with the stuff I hear because they Amen. Pastor, you ain't going through nothing. If I wasn't going through anything, I wouldn't be going anywhere. Amen. <laughs> reason why I'm going somewhere is because I'm always going through. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? All the folks run around talking about they don't want to go through something. You ain't going anywhere then. You stuck. You spinning your wheels. If you're going anywhere, you're going to go through something. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. Right? Right? And he said when you fall on a dive of temptation, what you supposed to do? Cry. Get in the corner in the morning, grow. Weep and cry, woe is me. Call up the saint, pray for me, I'm going through. No, he said, count it all, y'all. When they persecute you for righteousness, say, he told you, go, he told you, go on a consecration, go fast for 40 days. No, he ain't said nothing about going on a consecration and go to the church and beg people, lay hands on and pray for you. He said, when they persecute you for righteousness, say, start jumping and screaming up, weeping for y'all. Amen. Give thanks in all things. This is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in what things? Oh, what things? Oh, Good things. Oh, Pleasant things. Oh, prosperous things. Oh, joyous times. Oh, he said give thanks in all things. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because God is good all the time. So you want to make sure goodness comes to you all the time? Give thanks. Be grateful in everything. Just keep on. There is something you can praise God for. You can be hurting from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. 
You can have cramps all over your body. can't hardly move. But there's something that you can give God thanks for. You can be broke and disgusted and living on barely get along the street, dying in the block next to Grumman Alley, and can't get off that street. But there's something you can give God thanks for. As long as you got breath. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if you got breath in your body, tell him thank you. If you can barely breathe, at least you're breathing, tell him thank you. As long as you can say thank you, tell him thank you. Amen. I remember, I remember, I remember, I know. I ain't talking about what I think. <laughs> I'm talking about what I do. And the book said, who, who's blessing it is? The doer. So you hear the word of God, what you supposed to do? When you hear the word of God, what you supposed to do? Say it one more time. Do it. Say it one more time. Do it. Amen. He said, if you be willing, you'll eat the good of the land. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So a lot of folks want to eat the good of the land, but they ain't willing and obedient. You want to eat the good of the land? Look at David say, you got to be what? Got to do both. So he said, bring you all the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. So if, if we, we just supposed to bring free will offerings, and that's all there is, and God done away tithe under the law, because tithe was under the law. Hello? So if he did away with tithe, and out of the same breath, he said, bring the tithe and the offering. So if that's true, then we got to do it often too. They ain't got to bring no often. Think about it for a minute. How many people in their right mind that say they say would even say something like that? Because hmm? the same time he said tithes, he said offerings. So it ain't just tithes you're supposed to bring, you're supposed to bring the offerings. So now they tell you, if you don't have to bring the tithe, you can just bring the offering. Where did, where did that happen then? When did he do away with the, the, the tithe and didn't do away with the offering? Thank you. <laughs> to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Thank you. To him that believes the report. Hallelujah. And I said, keep on saying it. The New Testament and the Old Testament reveal. The Old Testament and the New Testament conceal. Jesus is in the Old Testament. As well as in the New Testament. You just have to know what you're reading. Amen. Tithing is in the New Testament. Clearly. Amen. Tithing is in the Old Testament. Clearly. Amen. Tithing was before the law. After the law. I mean during the law and after the law. Right. Clearly. clearly. So how is tithing the law? Tithing is not the law. It is a spiritual exercise. And has always been. Amen. Amen. And what people have missed out on is that they don't realize living righteously is a spiritual exercise. You can't live right without having the right spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> you can't! <laughs> but yet we want to take and make part law. The law is spiritual. Read Paul's writings. But you are calm. <laughs> and that's why you can't obey the law. In order to obey the law, you got to become spiritual. Amen. Amen. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in you. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What righteousness? Of the law. That's in the book. Romans would be exact. Eighth chapter would be exact. So what is this thing they talking about then? We're no longer under the law. We're not. I am the law. <laughs> so the tithe is a spiritual exercise because we must pay the love, judgment, mercy, and faith or we not fulfill the whole tithe. And people that understand that are cheerful givers. They get excited about their giving because they realize that that is, the, see, this is represent the sweat of our brow. The labor of our hands. Amen. Amen. That's what it represents. Even though it's a piece of paper. But it was earned paper. 
Yeah. I don't know how, you know, no wonder y'all have problems because there's so much revelation be pouring out in here and y'all don't act on it. Why would y'all be having problems? I would, I would have problems too if I didn't act on it. Amen. No wonder people be having all these problems. When you act on revelation knowledge, it take a part, it take hold of you Amen. and become a part of you. Then it start bringing forth fruit. Amen. 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 When we honor God with our substance, we 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 set in motion something that's so powerful that most people miss this. He said, honor with your substance and the first free increase, and your bonds shall be filled with plenty. What did he say? On him with your substance, the first fruit, that's the tithe of your increase, and your bonds shall be filled with plenty. Plenty. That's what God said. Amen. And then he said, your presses would burst forth with new wine. Yeah. 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 Just for honoring with myself. First reason men increase. Put him first. Putting him first. Hallelujah. I have need of nothing. Won't for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God. that real? Yeah. Yeah. One of my brothers had a fit yesterday because he called me and he, and he asked me to help him out. I said, uh, yes, sir. He said, well, where you want me to meet you at? I said, come by the house. You got that? I said, yeah, come on. Mess his mind up. He said, you don't be joking, do you? I said, no. I didn't think he, I thought he thought I was serious from the I guess he must have been thinking I was just talking faith, too. Yeah, I talk faith, brother Larry. But my faith working. I don't be chatting. Yeah, that right, Janelle. I'll be chatting. You yeah, yeah, people that really know me, they tell you, he, he be talking, but he don't be chatting. Mm -hmm. God is real. Look at the name and say, Yah is real. And he's our Heavenly Father. And he said, How much more? He said, How much more? Amen. So he promised to fill your house with what? Plenty. Plenty. Plenty, plenty, plenty. I don't care if I don't get a sermon today. I'm trying to get y'all past this broken, disgusted, living on Battle Get Along Street mess. I'm trying to get you on Blessed Boulevard. Amen. This is called currency. Electric current. <laughs> current flows. Current in the water. That's the flow of the water. You understand that? That's why this is called currency. Because you can't eat this. Right? You exchange this for what you can eat. So what are you doing? You're moving it. What mess with me, Pastor? I thought about that beef of damming, damming up everything. <laughs> We got to get rid of them beavers. <laughs> yeah. We got to bind up them beavers, Rosemary, and cast them out. Glory. Amen. Try to dam up your flow. Hallelujah. Fire be on them beavers. Hey, glory. <laughs> glory. Yeah. I smell hey, beaver hey, meat. <laughs> Yeah, they burning up. I smell beaver meat. Flow. Currency. Oh, the flow. I told y'all years ago. I was in a, a property manager's meeting. I used to be a property manager. And uh, that was years ago. Yeah. Decades. And I told y'all this testimony. I was sitting there at, at lunch at the meeting. After the meeting went to lunch. And the lady was asking about. Uh, they said, no, they were saying, Pastor Carl seemed like he always had money. How you get money? I pause. You know, you don't answer too quick. You, you know, even though you know the answer, get it, make them really open up one here. Yeah. So I paused and gave them a chance to get really open. 
I said, give it away. Money was never intended to be held on to. Money was created to be used. Imagine you giving God your money. He said he'll multiply your seed song back unto you. That you always have an all sufficiency in all things will abound unto every good work. Y'all getting this thing? God said he would. See, you up there looking worried about all. How is it going to happen? God. All the gold in the silver and the earth belongs to God. Amen. The cattle upon a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When they say fullness thereof, what that mean? Whatever's in it. <laughs> Lord, I'm going home. Jeez. How y'all be looking like that up under me? I don't even get that. that do you know that don't add up to Romeo? That do not add up. But it don't matter to me. I'm going to keep fighting this good fight of faith. Right. till you change or uh, somebody will come in and push you out the way. Amen. 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 Cause, cause if God said it, and he, wait, wait, now I can do a whole lot of talking, you know what I'm saying? And I can get proud and arrogant and start boasting beyond my means. And then somebody will pull me on the carpet and make me have to show up or put up a shut up. Then I have to shut up. But how can you make God shut up? <laughs> You'll never be able to make God shut up. That's too big for you to do. That's too much for you to provide. When? Y'all ever, ever did any research on how much God blessed David to lay up for Solomon to build the temple? Do y'all understand that he laid up tons of gold? Today's value, it would have been in the four, it'd be in the billions of dollars that David laid up for Solomon to build the temple with. Just gold, not silver, not the bronze, gold. not the timber, not the tapestry and cloth and all that stuff. Just the gold. It was in tons. And at the value of gold today, it would have been in the, the hundreds of billions of dollars. Y'all getting this thing yet? Oh. And you up here, oh, that was he because he was the king of Israel. He was only king of about four or five million people. Four or five million people. How many million in the United States? Right, I'm going to go about, about 350. Our last count I heard was 370. But 350 million. How many people are in China? 1.7 billion people. Israel only had around five, four to five million, if it was that many. When God blessed David to lay up in store for his son, a couple hundred billion dollars worth of gold. So where did David get that wealth from? God. You know, the blessings of the Lord make rich and he add no sorrow with it. What did he say? You go open the windows of heaven and pour out. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the opportunity to worship you and give in the word of God. Declare you love a cheerful giver, prompt to do giver. Somebody gets excited about their giving and knowing seed time and harvest. How can anyone not be excited about giving? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making your people the head and not the tail. Making them be able to lend and not borrow. The old old man, nothing but to yeah. love him. We give you glory that they are the Thank ones taking care of the hungry, the, the, the homeless. Lord Thank God, clothing the naked. Father, they are the ones the church is providing. We give you praise. We give you glory Thank and honor. That we are the above only Thank and not beneath. Yes. In Jesus' matchless name. They wanted their time. I was saying, Father, I have brought the holy thing. Out of my dwelling place. I have not used it for any unclean use. But have separated it unto you. Father receive my tithes and offering. Be glorified in them. Be magnified by them. Now Father I put to remembrance. You said if I bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse. I can prove you. This day I'm proving you. I claim the one of the heaven blessing. 
I declare I'm an abundant provision and no lack because I give and it is given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men. Get excited and hilarious about giving unto me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for making me your vessel, the channel, financial support into the work of the ministry. Thank you, Father, for I am that in Jesus' name. I mean, so that us and Father, let you bring your time off and so the work of the Lord. Put your offering in your hand and wave it to the Lord. The devil, he don't like it. That's not going to stop me. I'm going to get my blessing. Oh, I'm going to get my blessing. Oh, I'm going to get my blessing. Put your offering in your hand. And wave it to the Lord. I feel the do. I'm gonna get my blessing. I'm gonna get my blessing. I'm gonna get my blessing. Already got my blessing. Already got, already got, already got, already got, already got my blessing. Did you say, Lord, I thank you? Lift your hand and tell him thank you, tell him thank you, tell him thank you, tell him thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We got to learn to worship God when we give. We got to learn to worship God when we give. Don't let your spirit drop. Don't let your heart drop. Get excited. Get thrilled. Amen. Amen. Because God loves what? A cheerful giver. And you have not because you ask not. Amen. Amen. I obey God and I ask. <laughs> and I have. Amen, amen. I'm praying about something right now, whether I should do it or not. Paul said, he, you know, his liberty could become a, a problem, a stumbling block for those that are weak in faith. Amen. So I'm asking God about something now I want, I want to do because I'm tired of uh, doing other stuff to, 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 to make up for not being able to do what I want to do. Amen. amen. But if the Lord give me permission to do it, I will. And like we're talking about in Sunday school this morning. Uh, I serve God so y'all people think what they want to think. Believe what they want to believe. Amen. Amen. The church is blessed and I'm blessed. Amen. And if the church is blessed, I ought to be blessed. Amen. Right, man? Amen. I'm for real. Seriously. But you know one of the things that I, I, I'm troubled about now, that's why I'm, I'm struggling with whether to teach on what I've been trying to flow with for the past few months now I'll go back to Wednesday night's message y'all know what that was Wednesday night right amen cause you know I'm looking around I'm seeing so many people struggling you gotta learn how to live on your giving amen. a lady called me Friday from one of the uh, institutions that y'all support through me and it ain't your money, it's my money. But I say it all through me because I'm, I represent you. Amen. No, I ain't taking it from the church to do it. That's what I'm saying. I'm taking it from my own money. But because, you know, y'all doing it through me. And she called me. She was talking about signing up for that, that the automatic thing they do every month. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They want to draft it from your account. I, I told her, I said, no, we don't have to do that. I'm a monthly supporter anyway. She ain't the first one that called me and said that. I said, y'all got this thing wrong. <laughs> you got, you're got a Christian institution. You got to learn to trust God. Amen. You got to learn how to live by faith. I said, I support y'all by faith every month. I said, I ain't failed yet. I said, before COVID, I was sinning. COVID was sinning. I'm still sinning. Amen. Amen. I'm not bragging about I'm bragging about on Jesus. God blessed me to be able to do it, and I did it. And so, But what's happening is, People are getting nervous. I want to say, and even saints, church folk get nervous because of the way the economy is going. Who's your provider? Is he? 
You said that like you just barely saying it because I asked you to say it. Because you, I put like I put that in your mouth. But you'd be surprised. Yes, Lord. When I had, I was saying God was my provider. When I didn't have, I was saying God is my provider. Amen. I got, and I'm still saying God is my provider. Amen. You know why? Because He's always provided what I had or didn't have. Amen. It ain't nothing because I had or didn't have, He wasn't providing. How did that happen? You don't know. Ever since my father, God, told me that God said, bring the tithe off into the storehouse, I've been bringing it. Amen. What did he say he going to do if I bring my tithe off into the storehouse? Pour me out of blessing. I have not room enough to receive. I got two bonds. I got to give away stuff. Y'all ain't hear me. I'm upset with myself. What you doing with all this stuff? To be moved in. Toby moved in. Toby actually, Maggie, trying to put me out my own house. <laughs> Amen. So I'm about ready to kick Toby out. <laughs> Some folks know what I'm talking about. Some people don't. Amen. But how did that happen, Pastor? Because I've been doing what God said concerning my money ever since my father in the God. He said, to whom is the arm of the Lord? No, say, who, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, I believe the report. And so the arm of the Lord has been revealed. Amen. Amen. I, I believe that God wants all of us at a place where we're able to help other folk. Amen. 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 I'm serious. That God don't want us going from hand to mouth and from, from paycheck to paycheck, month to month, what do they call that thing you get from the government, month from month to month. God don't want us like that. Because that means you're living on a handout. That makes you no different than a beggar. Y'all looking at me funny. If I don't get this lesson, it don't matter to me. Go to Luke 6, chapter 38, verse. In your mind, I'm finna keep on talking. But... <laughs> We got to get to the place where we can trust God as our provider. Paul said in Philippians 4 19, my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By whose riches? His riches. The tithe is just an act of stewardship. God checking on you to see if you will be obedient or not. Amen. To keep you humble, make you realize that this don't belong to you. Amen. You bought with a prize. First Corinthians 6 and 20, the blood of the Lord Jesus the Christ. You don't belong to yourself. Amen. If you live your life like you belong to yourself, no wonder you struggling. Amen. Amen. No wonder you can't pay your tithes Amen. and give your offerings. Because you don't barely get along the street down in the block next to Grandma Allen. And you say, well, I'll pay my tithes fast and my life's going to be cut out. I pay my tithe, Pastor. I can't, I can't pay my house note. Right? I've had people say that. I can't afford to pay my tithes. You know what I said to them? You can't afford not to. And I think the biggest thing wrong, with watching, the biggest thing wrong, a lot of people call it pain. No, he said bring it. You don't pay the tithe. You bring it. It's never yours to start with. Leviticus 27 30 said it belonged to the Lord. Amen. All the tithes of the land is his. Amen. So if it don't belong to you and you take it and keep it and do what you want to do with it, what did you do? God didn't say you stole it from him. He didn't say you, you were the thief. He said you're a robber. Will a man rob God? And you say, Where and have we robbed him? He said, He said. You said, Where and have you robbed him? He said. So all them folk that quit paying their tithes and all, they said, when have we robbed God? Let me tell you what he said. In tithes and offerings. Y'all didn't get that far, did you? So they saying God don't require them to bring the tithe anymore. That's what they say. But God said, you have robbed me. They said how? God said in tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Then they say we're no longer under the law. Right? 
How do you keep from being under the law? You keep the law. If you don't keep the law, you are a lawbreaker. That puts you under the authority of the law. Amen. Am I right about it? So once you come up under the authority of the law, then the law has the right to execute a penalty for you breaking it. Amen. So what is the penalty for breaking the law? Whatever the law said. What did he say? He said, because you have robbed me in tithes and offerings, you are cursed, not only cursed, but with a curse. So what's happening to society right now? Think about this for a minute. The dollar went from being worth a dollar to less than a penny now. Virtually only worth anything in the United States of America. In most places around the world, it is devalued. They are doing their best to get away from the American dollar because it is nothing but paper. No promise they make they can keep because they don't have anything to keep it with. They sent all our manufacturing overseas. Y'all don't hear me. Back here, we had to shut down, create a new car because they lost the power to get the chip, which they sent from Silicon Valley to Taiwan. Why would you send a, what they would call that thing, a necessary, a vital part of your economy to a foreign nation next door to your enemy? Because somebody was brain dead. Professing themselves to be intelligent, they were ignorant. You don't ever put something that valuable this next to your enemy and think you will always have access to it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You're going to put your money in your enemy's bank. You follow what I'm saying? You're going to put your, your lifetime earnings in your enemy and you're going to invest it in China. You done lost your mind. So a lot of folks don't understand. You, you can put money in there, but you can't get it out. No, that's fact. You can put the money in there, but you can't get it out. So all you can do is just sit there and look at it. Just sit there and look at it. That's all you can do. Now, if you go over there and, and become a citizen over there, you can get it. So why would you invest in a co country where they're going to let you bring the money here? Sound dumb to me. Now, all you gonna do is sit there and look at them. Oh, I got this and I got that. Over there. That's no different than getting their money and bringing it here. You walk around with, what is it? Yen. Yeah. You walk around with yen, you go down to the grocery store and get them some yen. <laughs> if you go, to, you go to the grocery store here in the United States with yen, what happens? You better go find a Chinese grocery store. You go down here, the, the, the IGA, <coughs> KG, <laughs> they're not going to take it. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Amen. And that's what, yeah. that's what bothers me about these folk y'all want to keep putting in office. Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> you can't see these people brain dead. They have no clue how things work. They're, Pastor, how do you think you know? Because I've been studying this stuff ever since I was coming to the world able to read. Amen. And I saw them get off track a long time ago. And I knew this day was coming. And warned the church back in the 70s that it was coming. And now here we are. What you going to do, Pastor? I'm going to teach you how to trust God. Amen. Now, if you trust him, that's up to you. Amen. Everybody turn to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Can't get my message. I'm going to put it right back in the book. Got to obey the Holy Ghost. I learned that's the safest place to be. Look at neighbor say that's the safest place to be. I'm going to read the fifth verse. I started to start the first, but I'm gonna, where I want to get to is going to be down to the, all the way down to the eighth verse. So let's that's, 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 uh, that's start. This saith the Lord, who? This saith God, the creator, the maker of all things, Yah. 
Cursed be the man. Now let me let me let me let me clarify some things, get some preliminary information. You follow me? According to Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning, Elohim, leave the L out, because they put that on from Baal, Ohim. In the beginning, Ohim created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. You got me? Ohim placed the stars in the in the sky and the sun and the moon. Amen. Both of us know and understand that the moon controls the tides. It's based on the seasons. Amen. It's called gravitational pull. You follow what I'm saying? So God created all that. Who? Ohim. Yah, Yeshua, and Shekinah. Created all that. Set all that in motion and the laws that govern it. Amen. Amen. If you read the book of Enoch, that throws you off kind of because the guy wrote it come lately. He started talking about, you know, all these different doorways and entry points and exit points in the heavens. That's his primary uh, daycare <laughs> kindergarten way of explaining that. Okay. I understand what he was saying because of divine revelation, but most people look at that and say, that doorways and that way. <laughs> Keep looking. So God did all that. Amen. You throw a ball up in there, come back down, right? You climb up on this roof and you jump off, you come back down, right? Without uh, ex some kind of comp propulsion system, to keep you going up, you're going to come back down until you get in outer space where there's no gravity. And then once you get near a gravitational pull, you're going to come down. But as long as you're away from these planetary bodies, you'll just float around. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Amen. Until something with gravitational pull come by and grab a hold to you. God created all them laws. Amen. So everything that governs the universe, the Lord, our God, Ohim, created it. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Then Ohim put man on earth. Told man to till it and to keep it. Put him to work, right? Am I right? Amen. Man sin. Curse came on man. And the curse on man was cursed that he, everything he put his hands to. His brown would bear thorns and thistles. And he would earn his living by the sweat of his brow. In other words, he had to work hard all his days. So the ground that would produce produce was cursed because of man not wanting to go along with what God said. He listened to the woman. Nowadays, the women want y'all to listen to him. And some of us need to listen to them. Because some of us done lost our mind. Talking about us and some of us men. And some of them women got, got, got a relationship with God and you need to listen to them. Amen. But man's ground, the produce, the source of his income was cursed because he didn't do what God said. Mm. Be Holy Ghost. Oh, sharp I see Because ah, he did not do what God said, the work of his hands were cursed. Lord. So it would never produce all that was intended to produce. So he would work hard all the days of his life and not gain much from it. All and thistles. He is so into the soil and get dust. And it was until that, until Adam, not Adam, Noah, it was until Noah found favor with God, the ground was still cursed. Amen. And then God said after that, he would no longer curse the whole earth for man's sake. Right? Amen. So why would it be still a curse working if God said he no longer cursed the earth? That was the covenant that he made with, with Noah for man's sake. Don't want to destroy all flesh because of man. 
it is now depending on willingness and obedience. So he said, blessed is the man that, let me go on, cursed is the man that trusted in man and make a flesh his own, and whose heart departed from the law. Is that the Bible? That's that, that fifth verse, ain't it? And whose what? Heart departed from the law. Well, your treasure is there's your heart also. Right? Jesus should be our treasure. Amen. The pearl of great price. Now watch what he said. For he shall be like the heat in the desert. Y'all seen that round, dry, bramble thing be flowing, running across the ground, the wind blowing on them TV pictures. That's what we're talking about. And shall not see when good cometh. Did y'all see that? Time and chance, according to Solomon and Ecclesiastes, happened to us all. Yeah. The chance to be rich, the time to be rich, happened to us, the time to sow and reap happened to us all. Yeah. But he said that person that cursed won't see it. Yeah. Many people in the church are laboring on their curse. Yeah. They don't see when good comes. Good been flowing out their poor pit for 40 some odd years. Mm -hmm. The folk took their word lightly. But we're tuning in. I don't call their name, but tune all these big guys on, on, you know what I'm saying? Some even paid money to go see them. And still curse. Can't figure out what's going on. Because good was coming at them and they couldn't see it. What good? The word of God. Good seed. Amen. Do you have seed that won't produce? But good seed will produce. Amen. But he said, they won't see when good cometh, but shall inherit the parched places, the poor places, in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Salt is bitter. Y'all ain't getting that, is you? Living a barely get along life, <laughs> down at the end of the block, next to Grum Alley. What do you mean? Barely making it and always complaining. Always grumbling. Never having enough. Curse. Living in a barren land where there's very little. Having to, having to eat rock soup. And eat, and eat clay biscuits. And they put any flavor in the rock soup, they got to put grass in it, the little bit of grass that they can find. I'm not belittling because there are some places in this world they do eat rock soup. And they eat dirt and they do eat grass. But that's all they have. But God said it was a curse that made them have to do that. We live in a land that's full, basically, as long as we're in this little land and not trying to go overseas right now. But the only we live in this land, this land is flowing with milk and honey. Not like it used to be, but it's still abundance. But yet you got people that are living in a parched land in the midst of a land full of abundance. But they can't see the good. Why can't they see the good, Pastor? Unleaving on the curse. It's coming in one hand and going out the other. Mm -hmm. Their riches are sprouting wings and flying out the window. And no matter how they try to lock it down, seal the cracks, close the doors, hold on to it, it's still flying away. Somebody say, why is it flying away, Pastor? Because the cost of living is going up. Inflation have hit the land. Everything costs more than it used to cost. So the little that they make is not enough to, to, to make it. So how can I make my little become much? Put it in the hands of him that multiplies. Hallelujah. Turn the turn sixth chapter of the book of Luke. Put it in the hands of the person that multiplies it. We're living in a, 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 a prelude to an orchestra and plan Drought and famine for food and water and for basic necessities for life. I didn't say anything about it just happened. It's planned and orchestrated. 
And a lot of people are not going to be able to see the good that's even going to be there during this period of time because they're laboring under a curse. Two can't walk together except they be agreed. If you join hands in hands with the devourer, you just gave him your substance. 38th right. verse said in the 6th chapter of the book of Luke, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, yes. with all it shall be what? Measured to you again. So God is telling you he's going to multiply back to you based on what you give. Amen. You're so sparing, the Paul said in the eighth, the ninth chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians, you're so sparing that you're going to reach sparing. You're so bound for your weak bound. Yeah. What do you mean by that? The one with, ish, with the, the one tense, the one might, mm -hmm. what she sold was all she had. Yes, sir. Even though that was little to most people mm -hmm. oh, that were there, God. it was all to her. Oh. So it's the value of what you give yeah. to you that determines its oh. measure. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? If it's a lot to you, then it's a lot to God. But if it's a little to you, then that ain't nothing to God. That means you just gave God your, your behind. <laughs> so he said these that so so they these all these sowing out of their abundance. They give little. She sold all she had. She gave a lot. Who think who y'all think got the biggest blessing? She did. Because she gave more than all of them. And I forgot to start this thing up. She gave more than all of them. Because she gave all she why well, did now forget the head. She gave all. <laughs> she gave all. Yeah. They gave out of what they had. She gave all. Oh. And most people don't understand that is the law behind. Making God your provider. You got to give up ownership. I don't let that soak him in. The reason why a man was cursed because he took ownership. Even today, you got preachers, you got ministers, call themselves great teachers, telling people to take ownership. Not now. <laughs> it's not ours yet. We hadn't received our inheritance yet. Somebody said, yes, we have. No, we haven't. And if you keep on thinking you got it now, you're going you go to have it now. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be in control. That's what ownership means. You follow what I'm saying? And because we want to be in control is the reason why we're slack on our obedience and giving. Because we feel that the money gives us some control. So if God don't come through, I can draw my money out of the bank and go do it. But what we fail to take, take advantage of is the availability of news. To be aware of something that has happened with someone that had money that ended in a crisis and the money was no avail to them. See, when you pay attention to what's going on around you, you'll realize what's bad and what's not bad. Y'all ain't hitting me. Amen. Hmm, wouldn't record. That is not valuable. And if it's not valuable, why are you trying to hold on to it? Y'all got me? Well, what would make money non valuable? A society where it's so, everything is so high. It costs so much that even the little you have is not enough to get what you need. Now the little you have is no longer valuable. But what if you had favor? Look at your neighbor and say, what if you had favor? But those that do have. Then you would not need money. A favor with those that do have will get you what you need. Yeah. When the money you have is not enough to get what you need. 
He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over shall men give into your bosom. For by the measure you meet, so shall it be measured unto you again. The woman that gave the might gave all. The other one that was rich gave out of their abundance, so they just gave out of what they had. People want to want to keep begging God for a miracle and want to keep trying to fast and pray and do whatever they can to get God to come through. But what they don't understand is you can give money and still have them give it all. Jesus said to the man with the young rich ruler, he said, sell all they have and give to the poor and come follow me. And the Bible said he dropped his head and walked away in sorrow because he had great wealth, he had great riches. And Jesus said, I hardly shall it be for a rich man in the kingdom of heaven and it is for a camel in through the eye of a needle. They didn't understand what he said, so he said he did trust in riches. What did that mean? He trusted in his own ability to take care of himself. And it caused him to become spiritually impoverished. He lost out with a relationship with Christ because he put his money as his God. His faith was in his money. How many people sit in the church today that give out of what they have? <laughs> and they never give all. Jesus said, if anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. What part of deny yourself we don't understand. So if we're asked of God to do something right. and we put us first, we didn't understand the part about deny yourself. Like, we misunderstood. Well, God, God, God don't want me to throw common sense out the window. He don't want you to be crazy. No, he don't. He wants you to trust him. And if being crazy, the only way that you can get to where you can trust God and him only, you better get crazy. You better get crazy. But there's going to come a time, and God said it's written in the book, because God said it's going to happen, that the gold and the silver will be cast into the streets. They're not going to be worth anything. And that time is almost on us. Hello? You think about what happened to all these war-torn countries. Think of one that just happened right there in, in the, uh, Palestine. When Israel went in there and started bombing up all that stuff because them, them terrorists want to just sacrifice their own people by attacking Israel like that. What they thought Israel was going to do. Even though they provoked Israel to act out of sort, Israel had no other choice but to respond in, 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 in time. Their way of living died. Their lifestyle ended. Being able to get in the car and go to the grocery store and buy food, that was over. Just like that. It didn't matter how much gold or silver they had. In your time, in your lifetime, this happened for you to be able to see it. Now, we can either learn from it or keep playing this game and end up happening to you, and then you need God to come through. God can't be found. Hello, somebody. We're going to have to understand God was not biting his, biting his tongue when he said, you got to deny you see it. No, he meant what he said and said what he meant. That is the only way you can tap into him as your Lord and your, your good shepherd. Amen. Amen. The sheep don't take care of itself. The shepherd does. He leads them in and out to greener pastures. Amen. And what that first part said, and I, the Lord is my shepherd and I, 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 what? I, Shall I not want? Why? Because the Lord provides for me. One place he said he prepared to take you in the presence of your enemies. When China and them take over this nation and enslave it. Hello? Amen. What are they going to do to the Christians? Same thing they're doing to the Christians in their nation right now. Locking them up. What are they going to do to the church? Shutting them down. That's what they're doing in China right now. What do you think will happen when they come here? And your president has invited them. He has opened the door and let them come in. 
and American people are asleep because they're still giving you some pablum. Amen. Amen. You still able to watch your TV and be hung up on your phone and be distracted. He's still giving you no pablum. That catnip. Blind of what's happening to you. How many of y'all stirring up on these central items? Not many. Why? Because they're not aware of what's happening around you. Busy. And, they, and basically in some instances in some parts of the country, they put the people in a, in a situation where they can't afford to buy extra essentials. And, and it's on purpose. So that they will have to come to the FEMA places of provision, shelter, whatever, they, tents. So they can look at you and say, are you a Christian? They ain't going to ask you like that. <laughs> but they're going to ask you. And then if you say yes, what they're going to say? Well, we don't have anything for you. Go back. You don't qualify. That's why they're trying to get, you know, these surveys coming out now. I'm going to help you all with this. I'm, these surveys coming out now asking you whether you're conservative or, or liberal, whether you're Republican or Democrat. They are trying to classify you now. And because American people are so dumbed down, they're answering, they're filling out these surveys. They are cataloging you. So when they get ready to implement where they distribute the supplies to, they will know your name and your face. That's what's going on. So, Pastor, how can you tell them? Because I'm, I'm, see, there's a little bird in the enemy's camp. Amen. And he come back and told the prophet. So, stop answering those surveys. They are cataloging you to prepare for this takeover. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? I'm warning you ahead of time now. They're going to come out of me anyway because they already got me. <laughs> now, whether they be able to succeed or not, that's between them and God. Amen. But they already got me because I've been out here with my big mouth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But let's get back to this, this God being our source. See, you depend on, and it becomes an intricate part of your life, what you truly trust in. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Amen. And whenever that is put to the test or jeopardized, you start getting nervous. And when you start getting nervous about something, that means you got great confidence in it. You hear what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to give you a little straight. Some people, you know, they need their car, they need their car real bad, right? To get back and forth, to get to work. Am I right? So the moment their car starts having problems, what happened to them? Especially when they ain't got no money to fix it. Why? Because that's their hope. That's where their faith was. Without their car, they can't get, they can't make a living. Without being able to make a living, they can't keep the roof over their head. Hello, won't have a place to stay, and they might be in the street. Am I right? Use your noodle. Use your noodle. You'll figure it out in a minute. So their whole world comes unglued because of car acting it. A material thing made out of rock or minerals. They took a tree. They chopped it down. They took it to the house. And they decorated it and they put offerings up under it. What's the difference? They carved an image out of a rock. And they bowed down to it. Submit to it. Gave it lordship over them, or oversight over them. An inanimate, inanimate, inanimate object that can't think for itself, can't move by itself. They gave homage or worship to it. When you let your material things take that kind of place in your life, you commit the same kind of idolatry that happened under the old covenant. Amen. Amen. God said, cursed be that person. <laughs> That trust in man and make a flesh is all. They'll not see when good comes. You getting what I'm saying? 
So we got to wake up and get to the other part where it says, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. Amen. And what does he say the Lord is? Hope. His hope. hope. Look at your name say his hope. His hope. Expectancy, what he longs for, what he craves for, is the Lord. Look at your name say, is the Lord. I'm going to go back. Let's go back and finish that up. Take read on down in Jeremiah 17 chapter. Let's finish that up right there. But this is a powerful statement. God showed me this. It blessed me. I'm going to tell you why it blessed me. Because I forsook all. I had to sit down and think about that for one minute, one time. Because I kept trying to figure out, well, I know the Lord is coming through for me a lot. And I, and, I, and I kept thinking about that thing. I said, you know, very few people have forsook all. But I forsook all. I left it all. Watch this now. Some verse. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Why would a tree need to be planted by the waters? And how would that make a tree blessed? Because a tree needs water in order to live. Now that it's planted by the water, it'll always have water. God said to, to, to Israel through Jeremiah, same prophet, second chapter, he said, because Israel hewn out to themselves, sitting to get hold of water, that they were cursed. They had forsaken the fountain of living water. Who was the fountain of living water? Jesus said to the woman at the well, if you knew who was talking to you, you'd ask him water. Amen. And he would give you the drink of living water. Lord. So who was the fountain of living water? Jesus. Jesus. And she was suffering because of a natural need. She had been married five times and still wasn't happy. So Jesus was telling her that this water would satisfy that natural need. Not knocking anybody home. So we see this saying that, that he said it'd be planted by the water and that spread about her roots by the river. Now you remember Paul talking about being, uh, Peter talking about being rooted and grounded and settled in the faith. Oh, Paul and Peter won. I forgot what he won. Rooted in the ground and settled in the faith. How many people are really rooted Amen. in the faith? They're not. They know what God says about everything. So they keep on making bad choices. I'm going to say it that way. <laughs> they keep on making bad choices. And because of those bad choices, they're heaping up a curse on top of a curse. And they keep trying to figure out why, no matter what they do, it won't work out right. Because, see, you got to repent. Y'all know that, right? You can't just say, I'm sorry. You got to repent. What repent mean? Turn from that lifestyle. Turn from whatever yeah. it is that you were doing wrong. And do what's right. Y'all got it? So we deal, with, we deal with this issue all the time because Americans think just saying, this, I'm sorry, means mean that they should be forgiven. No, you're sorry because you got caught. You're sorry because you're suffering for what you did wrong. You're sorry because you didn't get away with it. That's regret. That's not real sorrow. That's remorse. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But it, to get forgiven, you got to repent. Yeah. Paul said repent with a godless sorrow and repentance that needed not to be repented thereof. Y'all got it? So they go, oh, I'm sorry because you got God. You're sorry because you can't have breathing anymore. You're sorry because you can't walk no more. You're sorry because you ain't got no money anymore. You're sorry because they left you. You're sorry because you lost your job. You're you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You're sorry because you locked up and incarcerated. That's why you're sorry. Not because you came to your senses and realized you sinned against God. Right. Amen. So in order, to be, in, order, in order to be able to get out of that, you need to start to keep from falling into that trap and being cursed after curse after curse. You're going to have to learn to start getting rooted and grounded yeah. in what God said. What did God say? If you go to the seventh chapter of the book of Matthew, you find that he talked about the man that did his will. He dug deep in the sand. If you never tried to dig in sand, you don't know what that's like. But he dug deep in sand and built his house on a rock. And when the trials and the storms and the hardship of life came against him, the rain, the wind, the storm began to beat against his house, it fell not. Why? Because it was founded upon a Rock. That rock, Paul said in third chapter seven, written, is Christ. Yeah. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Yeah. All the other ground is sinking sand. I've used them songs for some people because they don't know Bible. 
So the rock is talking about be your life on Christ. Now, if Christ is the rock, according to St. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, the word with God, and the word was God. So the, the Christ we're talking about is the word of God. When you build your life based on the word of God, when the storm of life come, it will not fall. Somebody say glory to God. But most churches building their congregation on music, on entertainment, on excitement, on thrill, on wise tales and folklore. Hello, some my new age doctrine and all that kind of stuff. That stuff don't work in the real world. That stuff only works in the fantasy. But God would, God's word would change your, your life into what he said it should be. He created all things by his word. Y'all got what I'm saying? God did. So when that word starts going out your mouth, you start agreeing with God, start lining up with God, your life will line up with God. Your home will line up with God. Your neighborhood will line up with God. The city around you start lining up with God. Because God's word is going forth and it's not going to return for It's going to do what he said it's going to do. He said he watches over the word to hasten to perform it. How can I show God I trust him? I take him at his word. How do you show God you trust him? Take him at his word. When you don't take him at his word, that shows you don't trust him. So how can you be blessed? The less is blessed of the greater. You curse, you need somebody that's blessed. Y'all got that? Amen. How a cursed person go bless another cursed person? What they going to give them? Curse. That's why the Bible said the husband must be first partake of the fruit. You can't give somebody something you don't have. Hello. They can't even tell you. A lot of folk got preachers out. They can't even tell you how to get out of your mess. I'm always teaching you how to stay victorious and how to get out your mess. Well, I come in there working with someone about Because he said if you be willing and obedient. Hello. Who blessing they need? He that hears the word and don't do it is not blessed. The one that hears and does it is blessed. So anyone that hears the word and does this word is blessed. Amen, amen, amen. Let's finish up that verse. It said, and shall not, and hit him. Oh, I'm about to miss that part. I shall not, I'm about to miss that part. And shall not see when he comes. Y'all ain't look, y'all. Heated trial, heated test. That's what it's talking about. Some people going through tests in their life and they're so heated. They're crumbling. They're melting up under it. What you mean? They become discouraged and they become depressed. They're falling in despair. Some of them even contemplating suicide. They're about to show enough get heated. That's not an answer. That's not a solution. That's going to make things worse. You don't want to commit suicide. That 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 be that ain't even in in the plan the program. You got to get rid of that thought. Tell that demon to leave you and go. Get out your face. Get out your life. Don't ever come. Get out my whole history. Yeah. Thank you. That's right. That was thank you, 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 thank you. Brother, you got to be like Rocky. So I'm gonna knock them down. You lead upside that fence and seeing birds. You know, some of them star having flashback. All of a sudden, they say, yo, Tommy, I ain't heard no bell. One more round. See, with God, you fight till you win. But when you're a sinner and living for yourself and the devil, he can stomp on you anytime he get ready. But when you're a child of God, that's a dangerous thing. I used to say this all the time. People didn't get this. Some folks forgot it. It's a dangerous thing for the devil to knock me down. Oh, yeah. Because, see, the book said, when the enemy comes out against me like a flood, the Spirit Amen. of the Lord will lift up a standard against Amen. him. Amen. Glory. Amen. I'd have prayed for somebody right now. I just picked up somebody that listened to my way of YouTube. Enemy trying to just mess with their lungs and take their breath. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And I banish you from them by the power of the Spirit of God. Yes. You are healed through Jesus Christ. His blood was shed. Receive your deliverance right now. You are healed. Your lungs are cleared up. They are made whole. You can breathe freely 
In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, the scripture says he's an ever-present help in a time of trouble. He prepared the table before you in the presence of your enemies. That's what the book said. More is he that are, they that are with you than they that could be against you. Yeah. If God be for you. Yeah. Woo! 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 Glory. Just listen to the aisle for a while. Maybe, maybe it'll dawn on you. I to create, one creature created sitting far and talk about who? Who? You walking down the highway, been there. Who? You can say, who is that? <laughs> that owl sitting in that tree. Amen. Trying to remind you of God be for you. Nobody can successfully be against you. The writer said, your enemies come out against you one way. God will call them to be smitten before your face and to flee seven ways. Isaiah said, though there be many that gather themselves together against you, it is not by me, said the Lord, and they will utterly fall for your sake. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. So you can tell your enemies, run up on God. You feeling feisty? You feeling froggy? Jump on God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave his angel charge of you to keep you in all your ways. They're going to bear you up in their hands. That's any time you should dash your foot against a stone. Amen. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him to do what? Deliver them. They run up on the mangers. I've seen the manger jack people up. I've seen the manger make them cry. It's a dangerous thing to mess with somebody that's in God and God's in them. Amen. See, that's what God wants us to be. For I hope, I trust, I expect to see is in him and not in the things of this world. Then you're really blessed. Let's read on. The heat, or you won't even see when he come. He won't even gather up on you. You won't no smoke, you won't no fire, nothing stay, stay on your clothes. Watch what he say now. Watch it, watch it. So you won't see when he come or the intense trial or the intense test. But her leaf shall be green. Shall be green. People say, I'm going through a dry time. When? You must be got a curse operating in your life. There ain't no dry time but the person that trusts in the Lord. He said, Thou would keep him in perfect peace with mind. It stayed on you. Why? Because he trusted in you. Amen. You can always tell them people's mind ain't stayed on the Lord because they ain't in perfect peace. Hello, they're always nervous and worried about this and fretting about that. I'll be so concerned about some folk, they're on the edge of blowing up. Why are you letting that stuff build up inside you like that? I give it to the Lord. I say, Lord, that ain't mine, that's yours. Amen. Through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, I let my request be nailed unto God. I cast my burden upon the Lord. Lord. Be careful for nothing. Amen. Amen. Cast your care upon him for he cares for me. David said, cast your burden upon the Lord. He'll sustain you and suffer none of your steps to be moved. Well, yeah, I give it all to the Lord. I think he can handle it better than I can. He didn't make me no uh, beast of burden. God didn't create Adam to carry no burdens. He didn't create me to carry no burdens. Jesus said, come to me, all you that live in heaven, and I'll give you rest. Paul said, he that believe on him have been into rest. Amen. So if you trouble and worried and fretting and all that kind of stuff, your mind ain't on the Lord. You need to get into the Lord. Turn from all that self, self faith and self esteem and self confidence and put your confidence in God. Let the Lord be your confidence. Ain't but so much you can do. Look at your neighbor say, ain't but so much you can do. But Jesus can do anything. Let me read on now. You ready? So you always be green. You always be flourishing and prospering. You always look happy. Amen. Amen. And, sh and the only time you won't be happy when you cry over somebody else. Amen. Not what they did to you, but because they're going through. Yeah. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Did y'all see that? Even when the year of drought comes in, when it seems there's a lack and a shortage, they don't even be worried about it. Amen. Amen. The Bible actually says, Isaac sold in the time of famine. And in the same year during the drought, he reached a hundredfold. Do y'all realize there are people, even when the economy is collapsing, making money? Thank you. 
We see it as, as something bad, and they see it as something good. They seen it as an opportunity to make money, and they made money, became wealthy. Yeah, established during the time of the Depression. Because they saw an opportunity that other people couldn't see. You know why other people couldn't see the opportunity? Because they, they, they God had failed. They God had failed. They God had failed. Amen. Don't ever let the enemy have you tied up in something the way you can't let it go. Because it'll blind to everything else that's better. Take that nugget and put it in your treasure chest. Then finish up. Now they're gone. Neither cease from yielding fruit. Same thing I just said. I had sold in the time of famine and reaped a hundredfold. Amen. We never lost a beat during COVID. I'm for real. We never lost a beat. Not one step. Thank you. What happened, Pastor? Because we are rooted and grounded in the law. I hope I ain't in the system. I hope I ain't in having a lot of bunch of members. I hope it's in the law. <laughs> if we'd have been dependent on folk, we'd have been in trouble. Serious trouble. But we're trusting in the law. And we're going to keep on trusting in the law. Amen. Some people around here going to find that out and they're going to show up. They're going to realize we need to get up under that covering. Amen. We ain't never stop having service. Never. Never, never skip the beat. The devil said no and God said yes. Folks said, how y'all how y'all kept it going? God. I didn't miss nothing either. I ain't missed not one meal. Actually, virtually, except for mortgages out of debt. Old man, nothing but the loving. How that happened? God. For real. What can what can I do that can outbeat overshadow what God can do? So I found that out and I said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna submit to you because you can do exceeding abundant above all that I can imagine or think. So if you can do that, then you God. So I don't need to be God. Stand up on your feet, I'm gonna pray. I don't need to be God because you know if he can do exceeding abundant above anything I can ask or think, then why would I try to be God? Thank you, Pastor Brad. I'm gonna let God be God and I'm gonna be the servant. Amen. So I just did what he told me to do. When the enemy tried to attack me, I just say, Thy will be done. Not my will, but God's will. Not the devil's will, but God. And God will that I prosper be in heaven even as his soul, even my soul prosper. And I know my soul was prospering, so my body had to line up. Look at the neighbor. So when you prosper, your body got to line up. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for the word today. And I pray that someone caught a hope to that revelation to put their trust in Christ, to let you be their source and stop looking to the world. So many, Father God, have believed the lie of Babylon, swallowed the hook, line, and sinker, and trying to follow that system, and it's failing them. Help them see and understand that the only system that will work is the kingdom of God, that they'll put their faith in Jesus, the king of the kingdom, and I'll ever give you the glory in Jesus' name. They once said amen, amen and amen again. Turn around, look at your neighbor and say, remember, put your faith in Jesus. Is not just an escape. Something you had nothing else you could do, so you done that. Now nah, people say that you ain't had no other choice, but nothing else to do. You know, pray. That's the best thing you can do, pray. Y'all got it? So never let them people make you feel like that. That you're an escapist. I ain't escaping nothing. I face trials and tribulations, overcome them through my Lord. Amen. Amen. What is the bone of God overcome of the world? And this is the victory overcome of the world. Who? Faith. Your faith. Amen. Amen. So don't ever let nobody intimidate you and make you feel like you're an escapist. That's what they try to claim Christianity is. That we the one living in the fantasy world. You looking at yourself and you know your man. You looking at another man, you want to be with him, and you want to tell me, I'm living in the fantasy world. 
You think you can keep taking it up the red and they're not going to damage something? And I'm living in the fantasy world? You done lost your mind. And need me to lay hands on you. They got to give it back. Because so that's the way of a beast. That is self-destructive behavior. To destroy yourself. And you saying I'm the one living in the fantasy. I'm living in the past. I'm outdated. That ain't outdated. Brother quit not hurt yourself. That is self-destructive. Hello somebody. When you understand how you work. Your body works. You'll run from that like 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 a mad dog after you. Amen. And you wouldn't care what nobody thought. I said, oh, no, I ain't going to kill myself, destroy myself, or nothing like that. Amen. The folks don't went, fool, trying to tell people that's natural. That's against natural. That's destroying you. And that's a fact, a medical fact. And they know it. But then they try to intimidate us, make y'all back in the corner and think that you you the backwards one. You the outdated one. Your way of thinking is archaic. I'm going to say this and I don't want to hurt none of y'all young people's feelings. You got to understand how Pastor Claude can talk sometimes. For their sake, I wish I, I wish that was true. Because hell, hell ain't no joke. The lake of fire ain't no joke, y'all. I know we, we, we giggle about some stuff sometimes, but it's not giggle worthy. I've been to hell. It's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? A moment of pleasure and eternity in the lake of fire. It's not worth it. Now, I haven't been in the lake of fire. I saw the lake of fire. But I haven't been in it. So it, it ain't worth it. So to, to, they think that they can do what they want to do and live in that fantasy world. And I think it's our kid. For God, I wish, I wish it was. I wish it was. I don't have that luxury anymore. <laughs> For all y'all that say maybe God is, maybe God ain't, I don't have that luxury anymore. I'm not, I'm not boasting or bragging about nothing. That took away from me that, that the innocence, whatever you want to call that. It, it's too late for me. I can't, I can't, you read six chapter book of Hebrews, you know what I'm talking about. I can't, I didn't taste it of the good word of God, the heavenly, and the power of the world to come. It, it, I can't go back. I feel, I feel now nah, it's done. I'm done for. But guess what? I don't want to. <laughs> and as long as I want Jesus, Jesus won't be. Amen. But for their sake, I wish that wasn't, it wasn't true. But it is, it is true. And, and hell is no joke. So I pray with all everything in me every day that something, God will use me, help me, motivate, inspire somebody to serve him. Come out of that life, come out of that world, and give their life to Christ. Because I know what's waiting on people that don't bow their knee to Jesus. And I ain't talking about I believe it, I know it. Somebody said, well, well you got to bet, better up on it. You believe that if you want to. What did Paul say? If he didn't bring his own body into subjection, he would become a castaway. Yeah, just know, see, seeing and knowing these things don't make, Judas knew Jesus. Didn't he betray him? Peter knew him. He denied him. So you think, really, if you know this, that's no, you got to still believe. You still got to have faith. Amen. Amen. So don't let nobody fool you. God bless you. Maybe see us. Now, so I will make the announcements. Oh, and those that are watching my way of social media, may God bless you. I hope you got the revelation because time is running out on you to get yourself together. <laughs> this system about to hit the fan.